I wanted to know the best way to instruct a language model on mimicking someone else's tone or writing style. Sure, there's the easy examples like write like a pirate or say it like Hemingway, but how do I instruct a language model to write like my grandmother? or maybe another Twitter personality that the model may not know about. This is helpful for when you're ghostwriting for someone else, wanting to mimic your favorite author's tone, or simply exploring different writing styles. It turns out that this is more difficult than I thought, and I wanted to find a prompt-only solution that didn't rely on fine-tuning. I posted the question on Twitter to make sure I wasn't missing anything, and I got a lot of helpful responses. For this exercise, I wanted to specifically try to mimic someone's Twitter tone and voice. After battling with this problem, I found a solution, or really a series of solutions, that I'm 90% happy with. It's not perfect, but it's a really good starting point. And my hope is that you'd be able to use some of these techniques within your own work. Let's talk techniques. There are three main tips and techniques that I want to call out. Number one, ask the language model to define the tone that it sees within an example piece of text. So it turns out that I'm not very good at writing instructions on how to match tone. And I wanted to offload this task to the language model in the first place. So I said, hey, here's an example piece of text. What is the tone that you see, please be verbose, in this piece of text? Then I use that output as the instructions for the next prompt. The next tip is one that I actually picked up from Twitter, which was ask the language model which authors the example text sounds like. What's super interesting is the knowledge about who these authors are is inherent in the model. It doesn't learn anything net new from the prompt per se. So it's really awesome to be able to take advantage of that intuition that the model has and ask it to replicate similar sounding people. This isn't ideal because you're actually mimicking the voice of someone else, not necessarily the person that you want, but it's the 85% solution and it's really close. Final tip is gonna be around examples. So don't be shy and put a whole bunch of examples about the style that you want your language model to copy or mimic right within the prompt. Let's jump into some code and run through this entire process. All right, let's jump into some code here. So we have four levels of tone matching techniques that we're gonna run through. We're gonna do a simple one, intermediate, AI assisted, and then technique fusion. I almost called this technique spaghetti, but uh, technique fusion sounded a little bit better. Uh, today's goal is we're gonna be generating tweets that mimic the style of online personalities. And my intention here is you can customize this code to generate emails, chat messages, whatever types of things you may actually wanna generate. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and import our packages. Today, we're actually going to use a chat model because I want to use GPT-4. Then we're going to import prompt templates so we can do some prompt templating later, some envir environment variable support, and we're actually going to be pulling tweets. And so I'm going to use the Tweepy library to pull some tweets today. Next thing we're going to do is set our OpenAI API key. Now, this can be an actual uh, environment variable, or you can set it right here if uh, you don't want to do that. We're going to use GPT-4 today, so I'm going to create uh, my LLM. Let's go ahead and run that. Great, and so let's move on to method one, which is just simply describing as a human which tone you want your language model to have. So with my prompt, I'm gonna say, please create me a tweet about going to the park and eating a sandwich. And you can see here that we don't have any tone described. This will be our benchmark for where we're at here. Sunshine, fresh air, and a scrumptious sandwich in hand with some emojis and some hashtags. Now this tweet isn't bad, but what I've learned over this process is that the model has an inherent bias as to what it thinks a tweet is. Now what you think a tweet is may not be what it thinks it is, what I think, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But what the model thinks a tweet is, is something with a lot of emojis and a lot of hashtags. So we'll have to battle this a little bit later. Let's move on to the next one. Please create me a tweet about going to the park and eating a sandwich. Now I specify the tone. And here I'm going to say, don't use any emojis or hashtags. Use simple language that a five-year-old would understand. So now I'm starting to alter the type of language that it's going to be using. Let's see what the output is here. Had a fun day at the park today. I played on the swings and ate a yummy sandwich for lunch. I love spending time outside. All right, that's not bad, but what if I wanted to refine the tone even further and have it mimic a online personality? Uh, for this example, I'm going to try out Bill Gates. Don't use any emojis or hashtags. Respond in the tone of Bill Gates. There's something truly delightful about spending the afternoon in the park enjoying a well crafted sandwich and contemplating the beauty of nature. Okay, it's not bad. It's a bit more reflective. I think the model understands who Bill Gates is. This isn't a problem for a popular person, but if you get more nuanced, it could be a little bit more difficult. Let's move on to method number two. So in this method, what I actually want to do is not only provide a description like we did in method number one, but I also want to pass examples. We're going to be doing example tweets that this person has tweeted out already. And so in order to do this, we need to use Tweepy, which there's a little bit of extra code here. Apologies for that. But um, you can go over to the Twitter developer portal and go get your API 
API keys. The free tier is fine. Watch out for the rate limits. And then next thing we're gonna do is define uh, get original tweets. And so these are the tweets that come from a specific username. Now there's a whole bunch of code here and this isn't a Tweepy tutorial. So I'm not gonna go through this here, but just know that I'm gonna go grab the top tweets by like count from a specific user. And if you wanna run through the details on here, please uh, check out the notebook and see the comments I put in here. All right, so for user screen name, Bill Gates, this is actually his um, screen name. You could replace this with whoever you want. Users tweets, go get original tweets. Let's go ahead and run that. That's not defined, fabulous. Let's run through that. And then let's look at a sample of Bill's tweets. So his top tweet, these numbers prove why India plays such a critical role in today's fight to improve health, reduce poverty, and uh, prevent climate change. Awesome. So there's a lot of um, worldly um, tweets here, which is great. And he also talks about AI. Nice, let's use these as examples and see if we can work with them here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass these tweets as examples. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a prompt template and I'm gonna say, please create a tweet about going to the park and eating a sandwich. Here's the tone, the same thing that I had from up above, but now I'm saying mimic these tweets and then I'm gonna put in the example tweets that we pulled up above. So let's go ahead and run that. Oh, well, first I wanted to show you what the final prompt would look like. So here's the actual prompt. Here's all the, the tweets that we put in there. It's gonna pick those up. End of example tweets, your tweet, and let's run this. A simple pleasure of visiting a park and enjoying a sandwich can remind us of the importance of preserving our environment and local food systems, supporting them. Let's continue innovation for a sustainable future. Nice. So not only did we tell it to sound like Bill Gates, but now we actually give examples of what Bill Gates sounds like, and this is getting much closer, and I'm actually pretty happy with this here, but what if it's not a public figure? I think it's gonna give us a bit more of a hard time. So that's where we move on to method number three. So in method number three, what we're doing is doing an AI assisted tone generation. And what that means is, is well, I figured out that I'm not very good at writing tone. So what I wanted to do was actually tell the language model, hey, I need you to define the tone for what you see within these example tweets. Then with that output, I'm gonna take those instructions that it gave me and I'm actually gonna put that into the next prompt. All right, let's see what this looks like in code here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna ask the language model, how do you even evaluate tone in the first place? I mean, I could maybe make it up, but I'm not an English major, I'm not so sure. So the prompt I'm gonna ask it with is, can you please generate a list of tone attributes and a description to describe a piece of writing by? Things like pace, mood, et cetera, respond with nothing else besides the list. And I'm actually gonna put this within a variable here, how to describe tone, and then I'm gonna print this out so we can see what it says. All right, so what it responded with was pace, mood, tone, voice, dictation. Uh, there's 21 different attributes of what a tone could sound like. This might be a little too much, and if I was doing this on my own, I'd experiment with a shorter list. But either way, what we wanna do here is then feed some example pieces of work and say, hey, language model, what is the pace of this example pieces of work. What is the mood? What is the tone? What is the voice? So we can start to get a set of instructions about how to replicate those examples, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're actually then gonna get an author's tone description. We're gonna take those uh, different attributes about tone and we're gonna say, hey, this is how you describe tone. Here are the examples. Can you please list out the tone qualities of the examples above? So what we wanted to do is we wanted to pull out the imagery, the theme, the point of view, and all that from the examples to generate a piece of instruction for us. Let's run this and let's see how that goes. All right, so what we get at the other end is we get instructions for how to match the tone that was in those examples. So for pace, moderate, allowing for thoughtful reflection on topics discussed. Interesting, mood. Optimistic and enthusiastic, highlighting positive aspects and potential solutions. That's pretty cool because what we just had was a blueprint to match Bill Gates' style and tone. So it's pretty interesting to see what it says about Bill Gates. It's also pretty interesting to see what it says about other people. What I wanna do is I wanna take these instructions, uh, even though they're a bit verbose, and I want to put those into the prompt. And then those are my set of instructions for the language model on how to match those, which is really cool. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have our instructions again. You're an AI bot that is very good at mimicking an author's writing style. And then we're gonna put in a description of the author's tone. Then we're gonna put in the examples again, and we're gonna say, please create a tweet about going to the park and eating a sandwich with these specific instructions. All right, I'll go ahead and run that, and let's run this one. I recently took a leisurely stroll through the park, enjoying the beauty of nature and savoring a delicious sandwich. And it even put it in the link for us. That's kind of interesting. Let's see where this link goes. 
Uh, nothing to see here. The model, language model made up a link. But either way, this is a pretty interesting tweet because this actually does sound a lot like Bill Gates, which is cool. All right. So what I want to do is move on to method four, the technique fusion. So I learned a few different things along the way. Some of those I discussed at the beginning of the video. One of the techniques I want to highlight here is the ask the LLM for similar sounding authors. So I need to give credit to Scott Mitchell over here. You can see his link to his Twitter. What he said is at his work, they have writing styles and then they ask the language model, hey, which authors does this writing style most closely represent? And then they ask it to reproduce that tone. And I actually found that to be a pretty uh, solid method because just like the word tweet is an inherent bias within the model, well, so are what different authors and public figures actually sound like. So even if we pass examples from an unknown author, the language model can almost do pattern recognition and see, oh, well, this example sounds like these authors. And then if we tell it, hey, go sound like those authors, we get pretty close to the final result. So first thing we're going to do is get similar public figures. So you are an AI bot that is good at, that is good at identifying authors, public figures, or writers whose uh, style matches a piece of text. Your goal is to identify which authors, public figures, public figures, or writers sound most similar. And then here are the examples that we're going to pass. And I'm going to say which authors list up to four, if necessary, closely resemble the examples above. So let's go ahead and print these authors and keep in mind that we still have Bill Gates. Wow. So that was quick, but we still have Bill Gates, um, uh, example tweets. And it's saying this sounds like Bill Gates. Well, no duh. Now I put in down here. That's not too exciting, but trust me that if you do this for a lesser known uh, individual, there's some pretty cool examples that it can latch onto, which is cool. All right, so for the final output for method four, what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine all this together. So we have our instructions here. We're gonna mimic these authors that are set above, which in this case, it's just Bill Gates, but it'll get more exciting below. Here are the tone instructions that we had beforehand. We're gonna give it the author's writing samples in the example of the text, and then your task. Another tip that I found, which was actually really powerful, is the topic matters about what somebody actually talks about, of course. But the eating a sandwich at the park example isn't bad, but that doesn't really sound like Bill Gates because he would never say something like that. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to first write out topics that this author may talk about. This is me forcing it to do a little bit of thinking in the output before it actually gives me the exact tweet, which is one less step that it has to do. I don't want it to say, just make up a tweet, right? I wanted to have examples that it already generated. Second, write a concise passage under 300 characters as if you're the author described above. Now you'll notice here that I didn't actually say the word tweet. I just referenced it by saying under 300 characters. And I know it's not going to be exactly 300 characters. That's not the point. The point is that it's short. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. And we're going to call this method for prompt template. And we're going to pass in our authors, our tone description and our user tweets. And I actually, I commented this one out, but if you want to see what this final prompt actually looks like, you can see here as the instructions, mimic these authors, Bill Gates, a whole bunch of instructions on how to match the tone. We have some uh, examples about how to uh, do it. And then finally, at the very end, we get our final task here, but that's kind of long. So I'm going to comment that one out. So let's go ahead and run this on the final prompt. All right. And so for the output topics that this author may talk about global health and healthcare initiatives, uh, education, climate change, technological advances, advancements. Awesome. Those all sound like something that Bill Gates would actually talk about. And so concise passage as an author. Imagine this, this would be the tweet. I recently visited a remarkable school in Kenya where students are using solar powered tablets in order to access quality education. It's inspiring, inspiring to see how technology can transform lives and create a brighter future for these children. That sounds a lot like Bill Gates. And this is really cool. I could see him tweeting this out. So once I found that this technique uh, with this method for above, I'd call this about 90% there. There are some edge cases where it doesn't quite work and we're going to see those in a second. Um, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Let's talk about some extra credit here. So Bill Gates is fun, but what about if we did this for a whole bunch of different people? So I want to loop this process through many Twitter accounts, which is why I put all the prompts up above in functions. And so we can reuse them down here. So what I actually want to do here is I want to do accounts to mimic. And so I listed a whole bunch of different accounts here, actually 16 of people who I like to follow on Twitter. And we're going to see what their writing style actually sounds like. So this is actually going to burn through quite a few tokens. And if you don't want to run this yourself, I saved the output as a JSON, which you can load up here and uh, check it out yourself. But either way, what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through this list of Twitter usernames and we're going to say, go get their top tweets. 
go get their similar sounding authors, go get the tone description. So how to actually sound like that person, and then go put those all together in a full prompt, which is the final prompt that we had up above and then loop through those, go predict it and go put the output. Let's check out what a few of these actually sound like. First one with Jack Altman. So similar uh, authors, Paul Graham, Sam Altman makes sense. Uh, Naval and Jack Dorsey. And here is a quick description about what type of tone he has and topics this person may talk about startup growth and challenges, leadership and quality development. Great. Uh, let's run through this. I just had a chat with the founder who's stuck in the we need funding loop. Here's the deal. Focus on building a product users love and money will follow. This is almost too good that I need to go look up to see if this is actually um, if there's any data leakage here, because this is kind of cool. Let me put a space here real quick. All right, next one, we're going to look at Sean VP. This is Sean Pori of My First Million. He sounds like Gary Vanderchuk, Naval, Tim Ferriss, and Elon Musk. Oh, interesting. Here's some tone description. Here's what he would talk about. Uh, just had a convo with uh, a buddy's AI impact on jobs. Here's the deal. It's going to change the game, no doubt. But instead of freaking out, let's adapt and learn new skills. Embrace the tech, folks. Hashtag AI revolution. I don't think Sean would ever use hashtag AI revolution. So again, this is a 90% solution. It's not exactly correct here. We can look at Darmesh. Embrace the unknown. Challenge the status quo. Yep, looks good. Sweaty startup. This is Nick Huber. Uh, let's see what he says. Now, I put him on here too because he's... Um, I put him on here because he has a very distinct style on Twitter. Stop waiting for the perfect moment. Success isn't handed to you on a silver platter. Get out there, hustle, make it happen. Embrace failure, learn from it, keep pushing forward. No excuses. That actually kind of sounds like Nick. Let's look at levels. Just hit 10K followers on TikTok, and I'm telling you, it's a new gold mine for indie hackers. Twitter's overcrowded. Hmm, interesting. But TikTok's right for taking. Don't follow the herd. Pave your own path. Let's do one on Harrison, the uh, co founder of Langchain here. We're thrilled to announce the upcoming webinar on AI's transformational role in healthcare. That's interesting. I would love to see if that was actually in the example tweets because that's almost too specific. Next I'm going to look at is going to be Steph Smith. So ever notice how we're all obsessed with productivity, yet most the most productive people I know don't even read productivity threads. I don't know if she'd use all these emojis. I don't know her style that closely, but finally we have one on Sophia Amoroso. Gary, Naval, Tim, Jason, a uh, couple of good topics. Just closed a seed round from a new startup. I'm pumped. Time to disrupt the industry and prove the naysayers wrong. It's kind of cool. All right, so that's my take on how to instruct LLMs to actually match your tone. I would love to know what you think about these methods. Please comment either on this video or over on Twitter. And let me know if you found other good ways to do it. All right, thanks y'all.